as a ukulele. Whoops it out a fucking daisy. That's an honor, we've been seen those dad is fucking crazy. Fucking animal, Google bananas, fucking AP. Hello internet and fellow F1 fans alike, this is the Prodigy Craft and this video is just going to be a quick analysis of what we know so far about F1 2018 and what I would like to see implemented in the upcoming game. Now F1 2018 content isn't something you'd usually see from me or F1 content but I am a massive fan, I watch every race, I have done for years, I play the games so if you think it's so different, you know, it's something I want to do and I want to take a look and show the people who might not know about some of these things that I'm going to show. So throughout the video I'll be showing clips of gameplay from 2018, talk about what we know and an interview with Lee Mather uh, with IGN. So the first thing I want to get into is career mode. Now personally this is why I buy the game. Uh, I love the realism simulation of being an F1 driver, being able to put your name in and you know, it, it really gets you in there. It's the closest thing many of us will ever get to even driving an F1 car. I thought the 2017 career mode was good, outstanding in fact, and it really got me hooked in. But unfortunately, after one or two season, it just fell a bit flat for me. The same call from Emma every race, telling me what she expects. The same lines from Crofty and Ant every race just takes me out of it. And what the hell is Kimmy smiling on the podium? In 2018, we can expect big changes to career mode. So I'm just putting up a screenshot here that says career mode will be even bigger. This is from a F1 2018 blog. It says the career mode was one of the highlights of F1 2017, featuring female avatars and an expanded research and development system boasting 115 upgrades as players were tasked with developing their car over several seasons. This year, it's set to be bigger than ever, with Paul promising that it will immerse players even deeper into the world of F1 than before. That's all we know so far, Paul says, but there are many other great enhancements to be revealed before the game launches. We can't wait to hear more. So that's quite uh, vague, but it sounds promising. In an interview with IGN, Lee Mather, who's the game director of the Formula 1 games at Codemasters, he shows off some gameplay from 2018 as well as talking about lots of features including tidbits of information about career mode. We want the player to make headlines and that's very much what we're doing here which is you know you're interviewing me mm -hmm. we're talking about the game. Uh, in the game we've got a new character who's going to interview the player uh, and whatever you get asked and whatever you respond will feed very heavily into the new career systems that we've implemented in the game. So we will have a new character that interviewed the player. That's a nice touch, it's something that will be a welcome feature and hopefully really make you feel like your choices matter. Next, Lee talks about how it's implemented, how it works and how it will change your game. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so basically you'll get a, a number of options on screen that you'll select using the D-pad. Uh, you'll maybe get a, a maximum of four choices, um, but as you progress through your career, we'll open up some of the options you can, you can refer to as well. So we're basing it very much on the character of the player. So we're giving the player the scope to become very sportsman-like or, you know, or very showman-like. So, so the answers you know, depend on, on what sort of a character you are. So it may be I come into a season and say, I'm going to own everybody. I'm going to be the best driver in the world ever. So you're very showman-like. Mm -hmm. Or it may be you come in and you say, we'll start out small. We'll work our way up. We'll start winning. You know, and that shows that you're very much a, a sportsman. This is sounding great so far. Also there, we had some footage from inside the Force India car, giving us a good look at what the Halo is truly going to look like in-game. But back to what Lee was saying, so there's going to be different dialogue options which will open up as you progress through your career. So maybe if you've had a bad couple of races you could talk about that, which should be really interesting. And another thing Lee says, you'll be able to choose how your character comes across. So you can be balls to the walls, world champ by the end of season 1, or you know, more modest approach. How you come across in game will most likely affect the things you can say to the media and how you come across to them in interviews. Maybe given different dialogue options based on how you are. So some teams will want a driver who exhibits a certain, you know, certain mm. character, but also the way in which you motivate your team will also come through from that. So it may be if I'm not performing very well as a driver, 
but I'm being really, really crass about what I'm saying. I'm not motivating my team <laughs> well. So it's maybe they, they get offended by the comments I make. And, you know, that <laughs> decreases my reputation with the team. It demotivates the departments. I don't get the R&D sort of things that I require. I don't get other teams interested in me. I don't know about you guys, but what he's saying is really exciting. I mean, I mean you heard all that, right? This is going to be a totally different experience for us, the players, this year. Your choices will matter, and from what it sounds like, they matter in a big way. This is something the F1 community have been craving for years. A real, raw F1 experience. Lee does mention that these interviews won't happen every race to make sure not to bombard the player, but they will be evenly spread throughout your career, so you'll have plenty of chances to have your say. Something I'm really excited about is the ability to chase up contracts, to be able to drive for other teams. In 2017, reputation, you know, that system was an absolute disaster in my opinion. So a massive overhaul is needed. And from the sounds of things, we've got it. So another thing that has the fans of the game split is the Halo. Love it or hate it, it's present. And people should have expected nothing less really. The game is a true representation of the sport. So why would they make it without the Halo? Lee does actually talk about the Halo in this video. Have a listen. Yeah, so as always, there's always changes in the sport. And there's been quite a few this year. Um, the Halo being one of the most pronounced visual changes yes. to the cars. And a lot of the fans have been asking what we're going to do with the Halo. So what we've actually done is the Halo's present on all of the cars. You know, we represent the sport correctly. That's, that's part of the mm -hmm. sport. It's one of the big additions this year. But if you're playing in cockpit camera, obviously that can be quite an obscuring item in the front of, the, mm -hmm. of your vision. So we actually allow the player to disable the central column of the halo. So we have an option to remove the centre post of the halo. For me this is a great add as we don't have the depth perception the drivers have. Because obviously we're looking at a flat screen. So the option to be able to remove it is very welcome and I'm sure it will make a lot of people happy. As you can see from the clip it does frame the view really well with the centre post removed. Another one of the big features this year is the addition of ERS, Energy Replenishment System. Hal, yes, this to me is a great feature and something I'll be very excited to get in game and on track to start using. It's net yet another a feature to immerse you in the car. So probably the big changes this year is we've added the ERS management for the driver. So obviously in the real sport they manage the deployment of their battery levels, so the amount of power that they get from the batteries. Uh, and we've added that for the player. So there's an auto mode for players who don't want the complexity, but then there's obviously the five modes that a, you know, a more skilled driver can play with. And for all you fanatics who like to play online, boy has Lee got some news for you. This year's online mode will be the best we've seen. Why? Take it away, Lee. Well, we've also got uh, the super license for the online play. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to try and clean up the online gameplay. And obviously it's a very challenging game and you want people match made against drivers of similar caliber. So we're adding what we term in the super license, which rates the driver based on their driver skill uh, and also their sort of driver etiquette. Mm. And then we'll use an ELO based matchmaking system to match drivers against, uh, against races of similar skill levels. Now for me personally, online play is something I've never really got into, purely because of how toxic some of the players can be. But with the new super license and being able to race against drivers of similar skill and etiquette is a big thing. And maybe I'll get into playing online because of this. And I know this will be great for you the guys who do like playing online. So for those of you who don't know, this game releases 24th of August just as practice gets underway for the Belgian GP. So make sure you get your pre-orders in for the headline edition. There's still so much I haven't covered in this video and I really suggest you go check out the full interview with Lee by following the link in the description to find out more information that I haven't covered here. A few things I should mention is that obviously the new Hypersoft tyre will be making an appearance this year, just like in real life. We've got two new, and I say new loosely, tracks added back into the game, which is the Hockenheim ring and the Circuit de Paul Ricard French GP is making a return. So it should be great to race around these circuits again. What are your thoughts on the game? What do you want to see added? Let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback. And also, if I've missed something important or interesting, make sure to let me and the other people know down in the comments as well. I'd really appreciate it if you love F1, you're excited for the new game, that you leave a like on this video, and subscribe for more F1 2018 content coming soon. I've been the Prodigy Craft. Peace out.